हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट डीएनए लाइगेज एंजाइम्स सो विदाउट एनी डिले लेट्स स्टार्ट दी वीडियो व्हाट इज डीएनए लाइगेशन सो बिफोर गोइंग इनटू डीएनए लाइगेज एंजाइम वी शुड नो दैट व्हाट डू यू अंडरस्टैंड बाय डीएनए लाइगेशन सो लाइगेशन इज अ टर्म इन व्हिच वी जॉइन टू मॉलिक्यूल्स विद ईच अदर एंड हियर द डीएनए लाइगेशन मींस व्हेन the two dna fragments they are joined with each other by the formation of phosphodiester bond so dna ligation is just simply the process of joining dna strands by catalyzing the formation of phosphodiester bond bond between them and this dna ligation it is done by a specific enzyme which is known as dna ligase enzyme and sometimes they may also called as molecular glue as the glue stick the things together so here this dna ligase sticking or joining the two dna fragments with each other so that's why we can sometime call them as molecular glue and one point keep in mind that the blunt and dna fragments they are not ligated or they are not joined by this dna ligases means this dna ligase enzyme it require sticky ends for the proper binding of these dna fragments now how the dna ligase enzyme works so here the these two dna fragments are there which have sticky ends and these sticky ends these are produced by cutting the same resection enzyme so what the dna ligase will do it will join these two fragments with each other so after binding there is the formation of phosphodiester bond between these two fragments so which is known as the ligation and these sticky ends they must be produced by the same restriction enzyme sticky ends which are produced by the different restriction enzyme they usually do not bond together why because the base pair sequence of the two sticky ends they will be different if they are produced by the different restriction enzyme so different base pair of sticky ends they will not join with each other so that's why the sticky ends which are produced by the same restriction enzyme they are joined with each other by the dna ligase enzyme now let's discuss about the mechanism of this dna ligation so as we know the dna ligation is joining of two dna fragments so technically there is a formation of phosphodiester bond between 3 dash hydroxyl end of the one nucleotide with the 5 dash end of the another so here this molecule is shown as the dna ligase enzyme and there is a presence of amino acid that is lysine at the active site which has free nh2 group on its side chain so in the first step there is atp binding means the atp molecule it bind to the ligase enzyme as shown in the figure so after binding there will be removal of this pyrophosphate and ultimately the amp adenosine monophosphate will bind to the dna ligase active site in the next step the dna will come the these two dna fragment or if there is a nick in the dna which we want to join together so they will come and this amp molecule now it will be attacked or you can say there will be a nucleophilic attack by the oxygen of phosphate group of 3 dash end of the dna to this adenyl group so after the nucleophilic attack there is the transfer of this adenyl group which is clearly shown in this diagram now the oh group or hydroxyl group of the 5 dash end it will also attack this phosphate group so there will be the nucleophilic attack again of this oxygen to this phosphate group at the 3 dash end and which will ultimately you can say make a phosphodiester bond in the next step there is a you can say nick sealing and the hydrogen ions are removed and there will be the complete formation of phosphodiester bond between these two broken fragments so now these fragments these are joined each other so this is the mechanism by which this dna ligase enzyme works now let's discuss some examples of this dna ligases so first in case of prokaryotes so there is a e coli dna ligase it is encoded by the enzyme that is lig lig gene so this dna ligase e coli dna ligase it is encoded by the gene lig gene and this dna ligase which is present in e coli it use the energy 
by breaking the nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide the next example is t4 dna ligase which is present in the bacteriophage t4 and it is most commonly used in the laboratory research it can ligate either cohesive or blunt ends of dna unlike the e coli dna ligase this t4 dna ligase it cannot use nad but it use the atp as a cofactor or atp as a energy donor for making the phosphodiester bond now the example of these dna ligases in case of eukaryotes so first is the dna ligase one so this dna ligase it you can say it ligate the okazaki fragments with each other means it complete the lagging strand by joining the okazaki fragments after the removal of the primer which is removed by the ribonuclease h next enzyme of eukaryotes is dna ligase 2 and it is a purification artifact which result from the proteolytic degradation of dna ligase 3 initially it has been recognized as another dna ligase now dna ligase 3 so it help in the dna repair it works with the protein xrcc1 and it ultimately helps in sealing the uh, nicks in the dna or it is utilized in the nucleotide excision repair uh, system next the dna ligase 4 it also help in you can say it also help in the repairing of dna and it uh, it works with the protein that is xrcc4 protein it catalyze the final step in the ho non homologous and joining dna double strand breaking repair pathway so these are some examples of dna ligase in case of eukaryotes so that's all for today guys see you in the next video thank you very